In this video, we're going to start taking a look at how we can manipulate some of these materials to get a general idea of how our sword is going to look when we apply our texture to it and kind of get a general idea of how we want our light reflecting off of this object as well as what textures we kind of want to go with whenever we actually do texture this. Material setup is very simple and easy to do. So what we're going to do is go ahead and just dive right in. Let's come over here to our perspective panes and just pick one and go ahead and right click on it. And you want to, of course, find your hypershade perspective option. Go ahead and select that. And that's going to open up our hypershade like we showed in the previous video. And also it's going to make our sword to where we can look at our materials as we're dealing with it. Again, you can, if your camera is not pivoted on your sword, you can select your sword, hit F on your keyboard. It will rotate around the sword that we have selected. So let's go ahead and start with the blade, seeing how that is at the top. Now we don't have to select the sword. We can go ahead and just select our blade material and make sure your attribute editor is open. Go ahead and hit control A if it's not, and that'll bring it up. And you can see the first thing that we're going to come across here is that we have common material attributes. Now this is exactly what it says it is. It's the color, the transparency, ambient color, incandescence. Each one of these sliders is going to control the value that it says it's going to control, which makes it very simple to understand how to make use of this. Now, of course, we have under type, you have the blend and all the different types. Like if I were to switch this to Lambert, that would change the material type to a Lambert. And again, we discussed this in the previous video. We want blend because blend is sort of like bling. It's a metal <laughs> but let's go ahead and start with changing the color. Before I start messing with materials, I always want to make sure that I press 6 on my keyboard. So I'm going to select this window here and press 6. And I'm going to reselect the blade. That'll make sure we're in shaded display so we can see the changes that we make. And we also want to go to Render and make sure we have it set to Viewport 2.0. Now with those options selected, I'm going to select the blade and I'm going to come over here to color and I'm going to go ahead and raise this color up a bit because I think the blade would be a little bit brighter of a shade. Now again, you can also pick a specific color by selecting the box next to the word color and you're going to get this window that's going to pop up and you can be a lot more specific as to the color itself. So you're going to be able to just move this little dot inside of this box and you can even get different hues by rotating around this area here. So if I wanted like bluer hues, I could go like that. Now naturally I don't want any of these, so I'm going to reset this. And to reset this back to the original black to white, you just drag the slider all the way down and you'll notice it reset it back to its original black and white slider gradient. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that like that. And I want it to be a bit more shiny because it seems a little dull to me, like not so much what the steel blade would be shiny. It'd be a bit more reflective than this. So I'll come down here to specular and specular is going to control how light reflects off the surface or how shiny the surface is. That's the best way to look at specular. So I can go ahead and just play with these settings. Maybe the eccentricity, I'll raise this up a little bit. The specular roll off, I'll go ahead and raise that a tab. And as I'm doing it, I'm watching the changes inside of this window. So I can kind of get an idea of how I like it. Now I'm going to leave that there. Maybe the reflectivity, I'll go ahead and just set that right about there. And I think this looks pretty good for a steel starting point for our material. So I'm happy with that there. And maybe the reflective color, I'll bring that up just a hair. And I think I like that setting right there. Now with the hilt, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in closer on the hilt here. And I'm going to go ahead and select the hilt material so I can make adjustments to this. And again, like I said before, we can click on the box to make adjustments to the color of this. Let's say I wanted this to be sort of a bronzish type color. So I'll change the hue to kind of a yellowish and get me within this kind of area where I can take a look at that. And that looks pretty good. Now, is it shiny enough? Am I feeling like this is shiny enough? Maybe I want to make it a bit more shiny. So I'll come down to the specular shading and I'll go ahead and raise the eccentricity and I'll go ahead and maybe make it a little bit dull, but it's eccentricity a little bit higher. So it kind of shines a bit more. These, these are all about messing with the adjustments. Now, again, the specular color, just like we can adjust the overall color, we can adjust the specular color by clicking the box and you can kind of see how that's going to make changes to the way this material interacts with the shine there. And you just play around with this kind of get a general idea. I think I'm going to raise this to like yellow, 
kind of goes something like that. And again, you want to kind of move around it to see how your changes are affecting it. So just do I feel like that's pretty good? Maybe I want the reflective color up a bit more. And that looks pretty nice to me. I'll go ahead and just leave that there. And again, you can play around with these settings as much as you want. Explore, find out exactly what each slider does, get a general idea of it. The great thing about Maya is as you're working with your objects, you're also saving your objects. So you can always come back, reload the scene. If you don't like the material changes that you made and you can't remember how to get them back to their default settings, you can always just reload the scene because again, we saved it before we even started. So that looks like a pretty good starting point. And one of these rings at the base here did not get selected. So I want to go ahead and select that and make sure that I fix that material there. So I'm going to go ahead, just mark key over bull, select this bottom one, and I'll go ahead and just select our rope handles. For the handle rope, I'll right click on this and I'll assign that material. That way I know that it's the same as all the other ones. So with this all taken care of, let's take a look at our hilt handle ropes. So I'm going to select the handle ropes and I'm going to make some adjustments to this. So this all looks pretty good. Maybe I want to make this sort of a twine rope color. So I'll go into the color here and I'll make some adjustments. Again, you can also use these sliders to get the hue and stuff. So I'm kind of making adjustments here and that looks like a pretty good starting point. So again, I'm just making adjustments, making it look how I want it to look just to get a general idea of how everything's going to look. And I'm not going to really mess with the specular so much on this. So I'll go ahead and leave that just how that is. And again, messing with materials is very simple to do. And we've already got a good starting point for our texture. And let's go ahead and take a look here. One more thing, this right here, this hilt part. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at using substances so we can apply a wood effect on this handle that we have this twine going around. If you have any questions or comments, please post below the video on brainpoof.com and click subscribe to follow us on YouTube.